Hi there, food lovers. Welcome to a journey where we explore the intricate relationship between what we eat and how we feel. Let's talk about something we all experience, the connection between our emotions and what we choose to eat. Have you ever noticed how your mood can dictate your food choices? We've all been there. A tough day at work leads to a craving for chips or a fight with a friend sends us reaching for the ice cream. These moments are more than just coincidences. They reveal a deeper link between our emotions and our eating habits. This is emotional eating, and it's more common than you think. Many of us turn to food for comfort without even realizing it. Food is more than just fuel for our bodies. It's connected to our feelings in powerful ways. It can be a source of joy, a way to celebrate, or a means to cope with stress and sadness. When we're feeling down, stressed, or even bored, food can seem like a quick and easy way to feel better. But why is that? Why do we reach for that chocolate bar or bag of chips when emotions run high? What's really going on in our brains and bodies when we turn to food for comfort? Our brain releases chemicals like dopamine which can create a temporary feeling of pleasure and relief. In this essay, we'll explore the fascinating science behind emotional eating. We'll delve into how our brain's reward system works and why certain foods trigger emotional responses. We'll uncover the reasons why we reach for certain foods when we're feeling specific emotions. For instance, why do we crave sweets when we're sad or salty snacks when we're stressed? Plus, I'll share some practical tips and strategies to help you manage emotional eating and develop a healthier relationship with food. From mindful eating practices to finding alternative ways to cope with emotions, we've got you covered. Ready to dive in? Let's go! Together, we'll uncover the secrets of emotional eating and learn how to make more mindful choices that benefit both our bodies and our minds. Let's break down the science behind those comfort food cravings. Have you ever wondered why you reach for that tub of ice cream or that bag of chips when you're feeling down or stressed? It's not just a lack of willpower. There's a lot more going on inside your brain and body. When we experience strong emotions like stress, sadness or even happiness, our brains release a cocktail of hormones. These hormones are powerful chemicals that can influence our mood, behavior, and even our eating habits. One of these hormones is cortisol, often referred to as the stress hormone. Cortisol plays a significant role in how our bodies respond to stress, and it can also have a profound impact on our appetite and food preferences. For example, when we're stressed, our bodies release cortisol, which can increase our desire for sugary, fatty, and salty foods. These cravings are not random, they are your body's way of seeking comfort and quick energy. Sugary foods, in particular, provide a quick burst of energy and pleasure. This immediate gratification can temporarily make us feel better, masking the underlying emotional distress. Our brains are wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. This fundamental principle drives much of our behavior, including our eating habits. So, when we eat foods that make us feel good, our brains remember that pleasurable experience. This memory is stored and can be triggered the next time we feel a similar emotion. The next time we encounter a similar emotional trigger, our brains tell us to repeat the behavior that brought us that good feeling. In this case, eating those comforting foods. This is why you might find yourself reaching for the same snacks whenever you're feeling a certain way. This cycle of emotional triggers, food cravings, and temporary relief can lead to a pattern of emotional eating. Over time, this can become a habitual response, making it even harder to break free from these cravings. Understanding this science is the first step toward breaking free from those unhealthy habits. By recognizing the triggers and the underlying emotional needs, we can start to develop healthier coping mechanisms and make more mindful choices about what we eat. Stress is a major culprit when it comes to emotional eating. It's something many of us experience, often without even realizing it. Think about it. Deadlines at work, family obligations, financial worries, all these things can send our stress levels soaring. The pressure to meet expectations, both personal and professional, can feel overwhelming. And when we're stressed, our bodies go into fight or flight mode. This ancient survival mechanism prepares us to either confront or flee from danger. This survival response triggers the release of cortisol, which, as we learned earlier, can increase our appetite, particularly for sugary and fatty foods. These foods are quick sources of energy that our bodies think we need to cope with the stressor. These foods provide a quick source of energy that our bodies think we need to cope with the stressor. It's a temporary fix that can make us feel better in the short term. Stress can also disrupt our sleep, leading to further hormonal imbalances that can fuel those cravings. 
Lack of sleep affects the hormones that regulate hunger, making us more likely to reach for unhealthy snacks. It's a vicious cycle. Stress leads to cravings, cravings lead to overeating, and overeating can lead to guilt and more stress. This cycle can be hard to break, but understanding it is the first step. But don't worry, we'll discuss strategies to break this cycle a little later. There are effective ways to manage stress and reduce emotional eating. For now, just remember that stress eating is a normal biological response, and you're not alone in experiencing it. Many people face this challenge, and there are supportive communities and resources available to help. Section 4. Boredom Bites – Filling the Void with Food Ever find yourself standing in front of the open fridge when you're not even hungry? That's boredom eating in action. When we're bored, our brains crave stimulation, and sometimes that stimulation comes in the form of food. Food provides sensory pleasure, the taste, the textures, the aromas. It can all be very stimulating when we're lacking other forms of entertainment. Plus, the act of eating itself can be a way to pass the time and distract ourselves from boredom. We're creatures of habit. If we're used to reaching for snacks when we're bored, our brains will continue to associate boredom with eating. The good news is that we can rewire our brains to find healthier ways to cope with boredom. Section 5. Sadness and food, seeking solace on a plate. Food and comfort go hand in hand. When we're feeling down, lonely or sad, certain foods can provide a temporary sense of comfort and security. These foods, often those we enjoyed in childhood or associate with positive memories, can trigger the release of feel-good chemicals in the brain, like dopamine and serotonin. These neurochemicals can temporarily lift our mood and provide a sense of reward, making us feel a little bit better in the moment. However, the effects are often short-lived, and we may end up feeling worse in the long run, especially if emotional eating becomes a regular habit. It's important to remember that food is not a substitute for addressing the root causes of our sadness. Seeking support from loved ones, engaging in enjoyable activities, or seeking professional help can provide more lasting comfort and healing. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Your support helps us create more content like this.